So it was a fixed exchange rate gold standard system. And it was in place from 1944 all the way up until 1971 when President Nixon took the US off of gold. Okay? So what I think has happened is that we, especially within economics, the textbooks were written and popularized, especially in the 50s and 60s, Samuelson's textbook. Okay? And those textbooks were written and the theories were written and the models were designed for an economy that had fixed exchange rates. And then in the early 1970s, we changed the monetary system completely, but we didn't bother to rewrite the textbooks. So we kept telling the same stories and using the same models and so forth. And it left us thinking that we had less policy space available. Because look, if you're on a gold standard and you're promising to convert dollars into gold at a fixed price, you have to be pretty darn careful about how many dollars you spend into existence because people might want to convert to gold. And there is only so much gold. So once you start running out of your gold reserves, you compromise the whole monetary system. So we chucked that thing, only we didn't get it out of our heads. And we act as if we are still hamstrung by those same constraints that exist under a gold standard. And the truth is, in the modern era where we are today, we need the federal government to run deficits almost all the time. Okay, and that's really controversial. It doesn't sound fiscally responsible. The deficit hawks definitely do not think this is fiscally responsible. Deficits all the time? What do you mean? The government should never spend a dime more than it takes in in taxes. It should balance its budget in every fiscal year. Have a constitutional amendment to ensure that that happens. Extreme fiscal conservative, fiscal hawks. Deficit doves, kinder, gentler deficit birds. Sometimes I refer to them as the mealy-mouthed liberals. These are the, these are the guys mostly, uh, let's be honest, who say, well, gosh, golly, gee, we, we fundamentally agree with you. Deficits are unfortunate, and we sure would like to avoid them, but sometimes the economy just gets so darn weak that government needs to step in and prime the pump a little bit, right? Rev the gas and run a deficit in the weak period, but as the economy recovers, we want the government's budget in surplus. So over the course of the business cycle, the budget will be in balance. Deficits in weak years, surpluses in stronger years, balanced over the course of the cycle. All right, that is the deficit dove position. I think we need a brand new bird because the others are not getting us where we ought to be and where we could be, which is at our potential, right? They're holding us back. Why do I choose the owl? Obviously, deficit an owl is very wise. Owls are uh, well known to be able to see in the dark so they can see things the others can't. Their little heads go all the way around so they can see stuff the other guys are missing. They can look at the problem from a different vantage point. This is a big advantage, right? Deficit owls want to balance the economy, not the budget. Okay, the priority is just different. What good is a balanced government budget if you wreck your economy to get there? Do you feel good about the fact that the government's deficit has been falling at the fastest pace since the end of World War II? That's a real achievement. Not if you have a junky economy, right? So the goal should be balancing the economy. This is a graph using actual US data that just shows the relationship between the government's budget and all of our budgets. It is the balance sheet position of the government on the bottom. Below zero is a deficit, above zero is a surplus. And what it shows, it's not a perfect one-to-one -one because I left out the foreign sector here, but I think it makes an important and striking point, which is as government deficits get bigger, which means this red line is diving down, that's government going into deficit. But look what's happening above. Private sector's moving way up into surplus. When government deficits fall, go back here. Government deficits fall, almost to balance there. What happens to the private sector surplus? It falls almost to zero. 
we tend to move in opposite directions. Their deficits help to produce our surpluses. So anybody who's out to attack the government deficit without knowing it maybe is attacking private sector surpluses, which we all know no one in their right mind would support reducing private sector surpluses if they understood that that's what they were doing by championing reduced government deficits.